previously on Jesby's tech department. Oh god, what the hell is that? That something's died. Something's died! There is the telltale signs of a battery explosion. The keys on the keyboard, they're orange. This is a nightmare. Plain and simple. Hello and welcome back to the tech department. And uh, yeah, wasn't that very dramatic. Our Amiga is partway through its restoration and there's still much work to get on with. So why don't we jump in and get to it? My name is Jespi. This is my tech department. Los geht. So the first order of business today is to get those keys cleaned up as best we can. It's, uh, it's slow progress. And for some reason, I didn't actually get my GoPro to record taking the keys off the keyboard, but they all came off fine and nothing broke, which is nice. However, this is a very slow process and some keys are in better shape than others. And boy, there are some really yellowy stroke orange keys here. The space bar especially, I mean, you can see it in the background there. It is pretty ghastly, if I do say so myself. Let's take a closer look and see the true extent of the damage. I mean, the inside of that key is the correct color. The outside is most definitely not. And as you can see, it's only faded on one face, really. The back end of the U key there looks perfectly fine. Now, to get the job done, I've come up with this radical idea of using Vanish Oxy Action to clean up the keys. Um, it works, I guess. Um, I'll talk more about that later. Also, the springs and the clips that hold the spacebar, enter key, and so on, and all the other keys, of course, um, they all need cleaning up as there is a fair amount of rust attached to them. So I'm using a little white apple cider vinegar here because that's what I had and I don't really know why I have it. But I've got it anyway. And uh, yeah, I'm going to set all these springs and everything to uh, hopefully clean up. As I continue to sort the springs, it starts to become very clear that some of the springs are actually rusted away to the point where they have broken. Chances are I'm going to have to get a replacement set of springs, but that's okay, I actually do have a supplier for that, but it does mean I may be wasting my time leaving them soak in the acid hot bath here. Yay. Turning to the keyboard tray, well, I mean, it's disgusting and there's more evidence of rust and probably a spillage of some kind that has caused those springs to, well, degrade, shall we say. There are many, many screws on the board and I'm able to separate the plastic topper eventually, but there is damage to the matrix underneath. Uh, the membrane has had its chips, it seems. Again, there's signs of spillages and rust and goodness knows what and when i removed it from the upper tray part of the membrane stayed attached to that tray it's not great news and in fact this amiga just seems to be the gift that keeps on giving or rusting nonetheless let's push on and get the old toothbrush out and get this top tray clean i'm using a rhubarb based anti-back cleaner because I mean, look at it, it's filthy, so it seemed like a good idea at the time, and it actually works really well, and smells fresh, which I like. Slowly and surely, the dirt underneath starts to come away, and we can see that the plastic case is actually in really good condition, save for the odd break here and there. Speaking of plastic cases, there are marks on our external case, and I'm gonna use some very, very fine wet and dry sandpaper, wetted, to remove these black marks. Now, the great thing about this, if you're gentle, use plenty of water and a high grid of paper, you'll remove the stain, but not the texture of the case. I've used this on a few other projects and it actually works really well, but you have to be careful. As you can see, the black mark there is slowly lifting, but it does require a lot of water. We 
With a little bit of gentle determination, a lot of soapy water and I think 1500 grit wet and dry paper, it actually does start to clean the case very well and all too soon I'm able to wipe away the water and see the case as if it's new. Again, you have to be really careful with this technique using lots of soap and water, wet and dry, and it will not damage the case too badly, if at all. Actually, I find that the texture of the case is still very much intact. This is more or less akin to using one of the old magic sponges to help remove old stains. Either way, it's making a great impression on this old case. I've decided since I'm here, I need to clean up this keyboard tray and the upper RF shield. Um, the RF shield wasn't actually on my radar to repair for this. Very often they're just left off, but since I need to clean up the tray anyway, I thought it best to cover both. This job is just turning into one huge restoration and um, actually I'm quite enjoying it, but don't tell everybody or they'll all want to do it. Shh. Now the RF shield is predictably in bad condition, but I'm hoping a spray paint of some silver will just help give it a little bit of its luster back. The annoying thing is both this and the keyboard tray, well, you'll never see. It's covered up and um, yeah, if you took this off and didn't put the R shield back on, you wouldn't really notice, but apparently I'm keeping it original. Turn into the keys and well, it's a bit of a mixed bag to be honest with you. The shift key has a sign of marbling. Some of the keys have come up wonderfully, and some of them have done bugger all. Uh, this is a little bit of a problem, but I think there's a problem with my technique. So what I will do, I will put the keys that needed back in for another swing around with the oxy action, and uh, the rest I'll start putting on the keyboard. Speaking of which, the keyboard tray needs painting. So it's a beautiful summer's day here in Vienna. I've got a tin of a silver acrylic, a box, and some outdoors, what more could a girl want? The first coat goes on the silver tray perfectly and actually it does start to look really good. For the RF shield, things take a turn for the worse, however, and this cursed Amiga, which is what I'm starting to call it, well, it curses the spray bottle. What starts to happen is that the bottle begins to leak. Now, I can put up with this for now. I've got a coat of paint on there and I've smoothed out as best I can the drippage, but it's a little disappointing. Turning back to our keyboard though, it's time to get those plungers back in and the keyboard reassembled. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is a slow laborious process. This is sped up, I believe, about a thousand times. And still, it took me a good 20 minutes and that did not include the time I had spent looking for an errant plunger. However, the tray is painted. We can put our brand new matrix in there. Look at that membrane, that's beautiful and then attach it all with the long and short screws. Now, I say long and short screws because there are a lot of little tiny screws that are needed to put this keyboard back together, including three long ones that go in the PCB that I didn't notice until I finished, which meant I had to take all the screws back out, find the longer ones that go through the PCB into the board, and then put it all back together. There are just days that will drive you a little bit insane. <laughs> this was one of them. To be honest, this whole computer seems a little bit cursed, but somehow it still is ticking. Now, onto the case. Now we have this broken area above the expansion slot. Now, I'm gonna use some super glue. This gel pen super glue delivery system. It's, it's a pen, it's good super glue gel. Never mind. I'm using this just to hold the piece in place. This is not the only repair I'm going to do. Now, I know that what is popular is using super glue and some baking soda, but I've got something that's actually better.
This is Millipat and I use it all the time for miniature painting. It's a two part little epoxy, it's kind of like a filler, but all you have to do is mix it together and within two hours it's as strong as nails. Now, the fun thing with this, they use it to repair all kinds of things like fuel tanks, cracks in floors, all that sort of thing, but actually it's used a lot for miniature painting. This tiny little green blob is wonderful because we can now pop it in behind our brick and with some water, it actually is very easily sculptable. So we can get it into the rest of that crack and it will be as solid as the day it left that factory. So with some gentle prodding with my finger, some water and a little uh, dabbing here and there, the millipad is now in position and it'll be strong as ever within about two hours once it's cured. Until then, water keeps it malleable and um, yeah, I absolutely love this stuff. Get yourself a tube of it, it's brilliant. While the Milliput is curing, let's turn our attention to an upgrade. This is a brand spanking new 512 kilobyte expansion, taking the Amiga up to a full one megabyte and making it sensible soccer ready. I'm so excited. Now I know from the comments um, on the last video, yes, I can actually add the other 512K off the old card into the slots next to the current 512K on the main board, but I, don't really like doing that. I would like to keep this kind of original. And uh, with this uh, card, I can do that. I also managed to fit the old switch, so it's now switchable, as it was when this machine came to me. And uh, yeah, now it's time for the exciting part of putting everything back in the case as the reassembly begins. For now, let's just route where this uh, cable is going to go. It's actually fairly simple. When I say fairly simple, of course, it's being difficult, but once the main board is in, all we've got to do is pop the switch in through the hole, like so, and we are ready to go. All I have to do is check it, make sure it's working, which of course I did before I wired it up, and it is. And uh, yeah, we now have a fully switchable 512 kilobyte to one megabyte machine. Our final job is to reunite our keys with the keyboard. Now, some keys have come up wonderfully. Not all keys have come up wonderfully though. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but I will say that they are all much improved from the originals that came out of this machine. It's not surprising really. The level of retro writing required has been immense. And I, this is the first time I've actually done this technique. So it's been refined and improved, but uh, yeah, it's gonna take me a while, I think, to uh, get it dialed in properly. One of the stranger issues I came across when I reassembled this keyboard is that the space bar has bent up slightly. So that's kind of weird. And we do have one shift key, which you can see closest to the camera there, that does have a little bit of weird um, marbling on it, which is odd considering it wasn't really left to be marbled, but yeah, it's okay. And I'm actually very happy with the results. So as the keyboard comes together, let's look back at where we started. When our Amiga arrived, it was, well, it was not in great condition. I found it under the table, hidden away at a retro burza and paid just 50 euros for it. The keyboard and case had seen better days with the keys being significantly yellowed. Inside, the real-time clock battery on the memory card had exploded and more or less destroyed the original motherboard. We replaced the main board with one from eBay, recapping it as we went and hoped that the custom chips on the old board would work, which they did. Finally, then it was time to tackle the keys and clean the case and hopefully turn this machine from e-waste to something that is actually usable. So did we manage it? Well, it's not often you get to say this, but the change is astounding. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but from the starting point we had, this machine 
is so much more improved. The keys are not orange anymore, although some of them still maintain a little tinge here and there. Hopefully I can get those cleaned up in future projects. Turning to the case, all it needed was a good clean and how wonderful is it to see that drive light access once more. On screen, we're treated to our Kickstart 1.3 picture and whilst this is on a plasma screen, it looks fantastic on a CRT as well. As mentioned, it's not without its problems. A few of these keys have interesting patterns on them from marbling or whatever. And the spacebar is definitely bent a little there. However, from our starting point, the transformation, as I said, is nothing if not astounding. This machine is no longer e-waste. It now has a permanent home in the tech department collection. And I'm very happy about that. Well, there we have it. Not the world's most perfect restoration, but to turn that machine from the thing we had into what it is now, well, I couldn't be happier. Well, actually, I could be a lot happier because what you didn't see off cam <laughs> is, you may recall at the end of the last episode, I showed the machine working, we loaded up um, A320 simulator there and enjoyed some of the uh, amazing Amiga music created for that machine. Since then, <laughs> And having put the machine back together, the disk drive has stopped working. Which is a real shame, because at one point I did have sensible soccer running, I had a quick game, I was so happy and I didn't film it, and then the next day the disk drive was like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm just not into it. So that's disappointing. Also, the mouse I bought to go with this machine, well, it only goes up and down, not left and right. So, there may be a part three to this machine's life yet, but... That's for future GSs to worry about. In the meantime, uh, down below you'll find all our social media, shtick and all that kind of thing. There's Patreon, there's Facebook, there's Instagram. Follow us wherever you need to follow us. That'd be great. If you like this video, please give it a like. Consider sharing it. And if you want to see more nonsense like this, click that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. A huge shout out actually to all the people who uh, viewed our last video or my last video on the Amiga A500. Lots of you viewed it. There were so many cool and interesting uh, comments there. Thank you so much for sharing it. I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah, thank you so much. We're now halfway to 500, which is pretty damn cool. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. In the meantime, all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate all your support and uh, until next time, cheers.